Okay, everyone, welcome to Lally's Game. Uh, this is my audiobook read through of the story of Lally's Game in the book Lally's Game. Just one thing before we begin uh, I really like the story. I have already kind of read a summary of it. I don't know all the little details, so we'll get into that. But um, really like the story. Uh, it's going to be really good, and I hope that you enjoy it too. Let's get straight into it. It's too good to be true, Selina thought, grinning as she reached out and took Cade's hand, turning his SUV onto the long, winding road leading to their new house. Cade glanced at Selina and smiled back at her. Then he returned his gaze to the road. A warm breeze slipped through the open passenger window and blew a few strands of Selina's long auburn hair across her eyes. She laughed and brushed them away. She turned to look at her fiancé's handsome profile. Cade didn't notice her gaze. His eyes were on the road ahead. How did I get this lucky? Selina asked herself. All Selina's friends agreed that Cade was an amazing catch. He had it all. To start, Cade was the epitome of the cliché, tall, dark and handsome, with wavy black hair and deep-set green eyes under thick black brows. Cade had the kind of face a romance novelist would describe as chiselled. He, he's a giga-chad, basically. <laughs> giga-chad. Uh, Selina thought Cade looked like a rugged movie star. He had the prominent nose, full mouth of straight white teeth, and square chin of an action hero. He even had an enchanting dimple in that chin, and his mouth quirked in an endearing, lopsided way when he grinned. He had the kind of whiskers that grew at the speed of light. Even though Cade shaved every morning, his five o'clock shadow showed up by 10am. It added to the I-could-beat-you-up-if-I-wanted-to appearance. Fortunately, however, Cade didn't go around beating people up. He didn't have the brain or personality of an action hero. He wasn't a man's man. Selina didn't like men like that, the men who wanted you to feel their muscles and regale you with their stories of their athletic prowess. Cade was a lot more subtle than that. Yes, he was fit and played several sports, and yes, he had very fine muscles, thank you very much. But there was more to Cade than his looks. Cade was smart and driven. He'd graduated in the top of their college class, and he had a great high-paying computer science job lined up with a top company. He was also romantic, attentive, and funny. As if all that weren't enough, Cade was clean and tidy and could cook. Oh yeah, and he loved his mum. Cade's mum was the reason he and Selina were moving into his hometown. Yes, his new company was located there, but he'd only applied to it after he'd suggested to Selina that they move because his mum was getting up there in age. Cade's mum had given birth to Cade in her late 40s, so she was turning 70 this year. Cade wanted to be close to his mum to help her out if she needed it. Selina thought that was too sweet, or so sweet, sorry. On top of everything else, Selina mused as she squeezed Cade's hand. Cade now had Selina, and she was an amazing catch too. Selina grinned at her self-praise, but hey, it was true. Selina was smart and nice, and she knew men found her to be beautiful. In fact, it was her looks that had paid for her college degree. She was tall and naturally slender, and she had modelled since she was 16. She'd done really well in the modelling world. Her earrings had more than covered college her earrings had more than covered college tuition and room and board. Her combination of pale, lightly freckled skin, large hazel eyes, high cheekbones, and sensuous lips, according to her agent, was, for reasons she never fully understood, highly sought after. Yeah, Selena and Cade were the perfect couple and they were going to be married in a few weeks. It was like a fairy tale, without any trolls or ogres, at least so far. Sometimes in the middle of the night, Selina would wake up suddenly. Her chest would feel tight, her skin chilly and clammy. She figured it was a mini anxiety attack, and they made her feel stupid. She'd freak out, not because something was wrong, but because everything was right. All Selina's friends had some kind of drama in their lives. Selina's life was sailing along perfectly. What was it that they said about the other shoe? In those freak-out moments in the middle of the night, Selina knew she was waiting for that shoe to drop. But it wasn't dropping today. Selina pulled her gaze from Cade and looked out the open window next to her. She was delighted by what she saw. Selina and Cade had attended college in a large metropolitan area. That was where Selina was, had been born and raised, too. Selina didn't hate the city she'd lived in her whole life, but she didn't love it either. 
she had always gravitated toward the countryside, to nature and small towns. Kate's hometown wasn't exactly a small town, but it was smallish. It actually had been a small town until the tech company that Cade would be working for had set up its headquarters in the area. The huge complex had created hundreds of new jobs and drawn thousands of new people to the region, Cade had told Selena. New subdivisions were built. Malls showed up outside the town's original core. Cade and Selena, however, wouldn't be living in the new areas. They'd bought a quaint old farmhouse that sat on its own five acres of meadows and apple orchards on the outskirts of town. The pale grey two-storey house, plus attic, with the massive detached garage and large front porch was a fixer-upper, but Cade and Selina thought the work would be fun. When they were done, they'd have a house perfectly suited to them. Selina was excited to move into the house and start the renovations, but she had to wait two weeks for that. Cade was old-fashioned. They wouldn't live together until, they were, until after they were married. Cade lifted a hand from the steering wheel and pointed through the windshield. The movers beat us here, barely. A trace of humour hummed through his smooth, deep voice. Cade had a great speaking voice. He could have been a disc jockey. <laughs> Underscore. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, Selena looked ahead. A bright blue moving van was turning into the driveway that curved past the apple trees that surrounded the farmhouse she and Cade had brought together. I thought they had another stop to make. They must have taken the bypass, Selena said. And they didn't have to visit three countries. Uh, count yeah country store sorry because they were so cute and might have vintage clothes Cade teased Selena laughed Cade smiled at the sound he said her laugh sm sounded like a cartoon princess's although Selena's speaking voice was low and smooth her laugh was high pitched and musical I always expect little animated birds and forest creatures to come running when you laugh Cade had told her on their second date that might have been when she'd fallen in love with him Selena playfully slapped Cade's arm. I found two vintage hats and a stunning homespun scarf in those stores. And I had to have that vintage dress. I'll write about the stores on my blog. It'll be a business expense. That's my girl, Cade said, always thinking like an entrepreneur. Selena smiled. That was another one of Cade's great qualities. He appreciated Selena's success. In college, Selena had majored in business, and the previous year, as part of a class project, she'd started an online business, a blog and website devoted to helping women be their true selves. She created info products, ebook and audio packages that, prov that improved women's self-esteem and helped them look and feel their best. Her packages and her blog became so popular so quickly that Selena had earned enough from the whole enterprise to match Cade's contribution to the down payment for their new house. His share was an inheritance from his recently deceased great aunt. Selena planned to continue running the business after they married. She was thrilled she'd be able to work at home. She wanted to be the consummate uh, count country bride, a happy homemaker who also happened to be building an online empire. Kay turned to their into the driveway. He leaned forward eagerly, his eyes bright. Selena loved seeing him so happy. Cade was never actually unhappy, but he leaned toward the quiet and serious side. He'd been very intense about his studies. He assumed, or sorry, she assumed he'd be the same about his work. He was really excited about his new job. He'd been talking about it most of the way here. Cade pulled the SUV up beside the moving van. He turned off the engine and swiveled to look at Selena. Ready for this? He asked her. What? Moving into our house or getting married? Both. I can't wait! Selena grabbed his hand and kissed his fingers. Cade had the best hands. <laughs> Such a weird line. Large and square with the faintest traces of black hair on the backs. She entwined her long, thin fingers with his thick, large knuckled ones. She held up their hands. Let's do this. Letting go of Cade, Selena grinned and threw open the passenger door. She got out of the SUV and inhaled the sweet smell of the apple trees' tiny white blossoms. Wow! Selena threw out her arms and spun in a circle. I'm going to get to see these blossoms every spring! Cade got out of the SUV and chuckled at Selena's enthusiasm. He waved at the two muscular guys who were opening up the back of the van. The movers, Ed and Bailey, had picked up Cade's things first. Then they'd come to the apartment Selena had shared with her roommate Val and they'd added her belongings to the van. I thought we'd spend the afternoon here, overseeing the move, 
and then I'll take you to my mum's house, Cade said. Sounds good. Selina would be staying with Cade's mum until the wedding. Cade came around the front of the SUV. He gave Selina a quick kiss. You want to unlock the house? I'll go talk to the movers. Cade headed toward the two big men. Selina grinned and started toward the porch that ran along the front of the house. She loved that porch. She couldn't wait to buy a porch swing. Selina stood in front of the stone fireplace in the large living room just beyond the farmhouse's small slate-floored entryway. She held a clipboard and she checked off the bureau that Ed, the larger of the two muscle-bound movers, was carrying in. That goes in the second bedroom to the right at the top of the stairs, she told him. Got it, he said. He headed toward the stairs. A couple seconds later, Bailey stepped into the house with a big brown steamer trunk propped on his shoulder. Ooh. Selina scowled at the dirty and scarred old trunk with their aged leather straps and the tarnished and dented brass clasps, lock and edging. Uh, she wrinkled her nose at the trunk's musty odour, which she could smell even from several feet away. What's that doing here? she asked. Don't ask me, Bailey said. I just work here. He shifted the trunk. Selina sighed and pointed at the floor. Bailey set down the trunk a few feet from Selina and trudged back out of the house. Selina walked up to the trunk and glared at it. Frowning, she tucked her, tucked, she tucked her clipboard under her arm and bent over to lift the trunk. Bailey had carried it as if it wasn't that heavy. Cade popped through the door moments after Bailey was out of sight. They're almost finished with the. Cade stopped when he saw Selina in front of the trunk. His face flushed and his jaw tightened. What are you doing? He snapped. Selina cringed at the edge in his voice. His tone was sharp, and it was wrapped in what almost sounded like a snarl. Cade had never lashed out at her like that before. He'd never looked this upset before either. She wasn't sure how to respond. Selina decided she'd start with her best dirty look. She'd perfected the expression since childhood. She'd used it regularly on her big brother. She'd only had to pull out the look a couple times before on Cade, Though once, uh, though, once when he'd failed to praise the chocolate chip cookies that she'd baked for him on the anniversary on their first date, and again when he'd made a snarky comment about how many shoes she had. Since then, he hadn't given her a, her cause to glower at him, or glower at him, until now. What do you mean, what am I doing? Selina flung back at him. What are you doing? <laughs> I thought we agreed to bring only our best stuff. We can afford to buy new things. We don't need old second-hand junk lying around. Cade hurried over. He took Selina's elbow and started steering her away from the trunk. Although she didn't want to walk away from the trunk, because she wanted to open it and see what was so important that Cade could get all uptight about it. She let him lead her to the other side of the room. Cade's face smoothed back into, his, into its normal placid lines. He took a breath. Sorry, I didn't mean to be short with you. He gave her his trademark lopsided grin. What we agreed to bring was our best stuff and... and our memorabilia. I'm pretty sure a lot of your boxes are filled with photos and keepsakes from your childhood. Don't know why he went British there, but that's, that's now what's happening. Selina shrugged. Yeah, but, but this... She gestured at the trunk. When I asked you about it that first night I went to your place, you said it was just an old trunk. You didn't say it was full of memorabilia. So, I figured since it was so ratty, you'd leave it behind. What's even in it? Cade put his arm around Sh Selena's shoulders. He shrugged. Oh, just some old stuff from my childhood. Keepsakes, like we agreed to. Selena made a face. Can't you store your keepsakes in something more, I don't know, modern? I thought you liked antiques. Miss, I have to have that vintage dress. I don't know what accent this is now, but I'm going for it. <laughs> Selena smiled. He had a point. Okay, so not modern. How about just prettier? Less creepy? That thing looks like it belongs in a haunted house or something. Cade's arm tightened around Selena for an instant. It relaxed as fast as it squeezed, so she might have imagined the brief sensation of tension in Cade's muscles. I promise I won't insist we use the trunk as a coffee table, Kate said. He looked down at Selina and gave her another of his irresistible grins. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. I have no idea what I'm going for for Kate's accent. 
even though it didn't say he had an accent, I'm just I'm just giving him one just so that this is more fun. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Selena had gotten to know Cade's mom pretty well over the couple of years she and Cade had dated. The lady was very sweet, with graying black hair that she wore in a bob. She was much shorter than Cade's six foot two. She wasn't nearly as fit as her son either. Cade's mom, call me Janice, dear, reminded <laughs> Selena of her own grandmother. Round-shouldered and soft-bellied, Janice looked as sweet as she acted. She had a heart-shaped face with deep-set green eyes like Kay's, and her wrinkles, smile lines around her eyes and mouth, somehow added to rather than, uh, somehow added to rather than subtracted from her pleasant face. Partial to pastel polyester pants. That's such a hard like tongue twister. <laughs> Partial to pastel polyester pants and floral blouses, Janice looked like the quintessential country mama, and it was clear she was comfortable with who she was. Selena liked that about Janice, and Selena was looking forward to spending more time with her soon-to-be mother-in-law. She knew Janice was a great cook and an even better baker. They spent several holidays at Janice's house, and Selena was excited about learning all Janice's culinary tricks. Selena decided she, she'd ask Janice to start with the roast chicken Janice served the first night Selena was going to stay with her. How did Janice make the chicken so perfectly moist on the inside and crispy on the outside? Selena just had to know. Oh, it's all just sleight of hand, dear, Janice said, deadpan. Unlike her son's deep voice, Janice's voice was girlish. She sounded more like a preteen than a senior citizen. Selena blinked at her. Janice and Cade laughed. Uh, who is this? She always says that when someone compliments her, Kate said, reaching out to Pat. Oh, sorry. I read that completely wrong. I had the wrong intonation. She always says that when someone compliments her, Kate said, reaching out to Pat his mom's liver spotted hand. Janice winked at Selena. I'm just kidding, dear. I'll teach you. It's about getting the cooking temperature right. And a couple other secrets I'll pass along. Selena smiled and leaned back totally stuffed. It was a good thing she didn't plan to model anymore. Eating like this wasn't going to do her figure any good. She wasn't too worried about it though. She planned to take long walks along the great, uh, along all the great country roads near their new house. Selina looked around Janice's cosy dining room. Janice lived in a sprawling white ranch style house. According to Cade, the home used to be linked to an actual ranch that belonged to his great grandparents who had owned several hundred of head of cattle. By the time Cade was born though, the family had given up cattle ranching. His grandparents had sold off the bulk of the land, keeping just a few acres for privacy around the home. Cade's dad had been an attorney. He would died of a heart attack when Cade was young. Because Janice loved ceramic figurines, doilies, and overstuffed furniture, the interior of Janice's home was a lot fussier than Selena preferred. But it was homey too. You felt like you could relax and be yourself in this home. Janice stood and started gathering up dirty dishes from her oak trestle table. Selena started to help, but Janice waved her way. Cheesecake for dessert, anyone? Cade's arm shot up. Janice laughed. I'll have a piece. Oh, sorry. I'll have a piece, and then I'm going to head back to the house, Cade said. I'll be up early tomorrow. I want to get a jog in before work. Janice patted Cade's arm. That's my boy. Fit as a fiddle. She grinned. And starting your new job. She turned to look at Selena. And a wedding coming up. It's all so exciting. It sure was. Selena wanted to laugh out loud in glee. She smiled widely at Janice. Thank you so much for letting me stay here. And for helping with the wedding. Oh, pish posh, dear. Janice said. It's my pleasure. Selena had expected the two weeks she spent with Janice to be a whirlwind of wedding preparations, but it turned out that Janice had everything well in hand. Selena only had a few details to handle. She had more time to work than she'd thought she would. Because Janice was a social butterfly with a seemingly endless number of clubs and committees, she was rarely home during the day. She was so busy, in fact, that Selena wondered why Janice needed Kate's help at all. But it didn't matter. Selena was happy to be here. She was, however, looking forward to moving into their new house. While she was with Janice, Selena was staying in Cade's old room, which Janice hadn't changed since Cade had moved out. Selena thought it was sweet, 
that Cade's space-themed bedspread was still on the twin bed and his constellation pattern curtains still hung over the windows. She was touched by the bookcases stuffed with sci-fi novels and old-school science, math and computer programming textbooks. She was also amused by the collection of plush toys and action figures that coexisted on the top of the chest of drawers and the desk tucked into the corner of the room. She was curious as well. She noticed a few photo albums and scrapbooks stacked on the floor of the small closet where she hung her clothes. Kate had never shown her photos from his childhood. She hoped the albums would show her what she'd been missing. Four days before the wedding, Selena realised she was too fidgety about her upcoming nuptials. I don't know what that word means, I'm sorry. Nuptials. To get any work done. Janice was out. Cade was at work. Selena closed up her laptop, which she'd squeezed between several toy astronauts and a plush frog, and she stepped over to the closet door. Pulling the door open, she sat cross-legged on the floor in front of the stack of albums. Selena reached for the first album, brushing dust off its cover. Selena opened the leather-bound book and smiled at the photo of the gap-toothed little boy that looked up at her from the first page. Kate had been as cute as a kid when he was handsome as a man. As when as he was handsome as a man, uh, Selena stared. Oh, sorry, I keep messing up. Selena started flipping through the photos. The first two pages of photos were pretty normal shots of Cade with his mum and dad in front of a birthday cake. The third page, however, was a little weird. At first, Selena didn't know what she was looking at. The photo showed little Cade in near darkness. Around him, bright coloured luminescence nearly jumped out of the picture's inky backdrop. Selena realised Cade must have been in a black light arena. Flipping the page, Selena saw a photo of Freddy Fazbear, the namesake of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. Selena had heard of the pizza place, but Cade never mentioned it. Strange. A few more photos revealed that the black light arena was in Freddy's pizzaplex. In one photo, Cade was pointing up at the pizzaplex's glowing red sign. Selena had heard of Freddy's pizzaplex too. It was one of the first family fun centres built in the state, a combination of arcade and indoor carnival with games and rides and food. The album had a photo of Cade in front of nearly every game and ride in the complex, but the bulk of the photos were taken in the Blacklight Arena. According to a huge sign at the back of the arena, the place was called Lally's Game. That was something Selena had never heard of. The place looked pretty eerie. For some reason, even just studying a photo of it made Selena shiver. A thud from behind Selena startled her. She dropped the album and whipped around. Sorry, dear, Janice said. I didn't mean to scare you. It's these ageing legs of mine. Sometimes I get dizzy and walk right into walls, she laughed. Just one thing I do want to say real quick is that uh, this Peterplex that we're talking about, it, it's called Freddy's Pe Peterplex. It's not necessarily called Freddy Fazbear's Mega Peterplex. So, uh, I, I believe that there are a lot of different pizza plexes all around the country. I don't think there's just one. But we are going to be told when it is the mega pizza plex that we see in Security Breach. So, I think that's important to note going into the uh, Tales from the Pizza Plex series. Let me just have a quick drink and then we'll carry on. Okay. Janice, wearing a powder blue polyester pantsuit came into the room. What have you got there, dear? Selena picked up the fumbled album. She rose to her feet. Oh, one of Cade's old photo albums, Janice said. How fun. She crossed to the twin bed and sat. She patted the mattress. Show me what you found. Selena joined Janice on the bed. Sitting and opening the album, Selena inhaled the flowery scent of Janice's perfume as she slipped forward to the last few pages she'd been looking at. The next picture in the album was yet another shot of Cade pointing happily at the Laddie's Game sign. Janice tapped to the sign and smiled. Oh my, I have such fond memories of that place. Freddy's Pizzaplex. Well, yes, but especially Lally's. Janice ran her index finger over the picture. It was Cade's favourite game. We couldn't get him out of the place. I think if he could have lived there, he would have. She chuckled. Oh yeah, that's the, only, that's the other thing I, I do want to say is that this, this story takes place really, really far into the future because if you think about it, we're talking about the Peterplex, yes, but we're talking about the Peterplex when Cade was a child. Now he's getting married. So this is like, what, at least, I, I guess like 10, 20 years in the future, at least, I think. 
So I think this is like the furthest we've ever seen in like the the big Freddy Fazbear's timeline. Anyway, uh, oh sorry, FNAF timeline. Uh, Selena raised an eyebrow. The dark arena with its glowing neon green and purple and yellow geometric designs and prehistoric looking caves and caverns didn't look all that appealing to her. There was something off about it, something that made her feel edgy for reasons she couldn't discern. Janice scooted closer to Selena and turned the page. She looked at the next picture and laughed. Selena didn't laugh. Her unsettled feeling deepened as she looked at the photo of Cade with what, at first glance, appeared to be an unfriendly version of the famous friendly ghost, but at second glance was clearly a robot. That was Lally, Janice said, poking at the robot's round white face just above its soulless black eyes. Selena rubbed the back of her neck. It felt like ants were crawling out of her hair. Lally was there to be a playmate for the kids who didn't have a friend to play with, Janice said. Cade's best friends didn't like the game as much as he did, so he was usually in the arena by himself. Janice was sitting right next to Selena, but for some reason her voice sounded like it was coming from far away. Selena was so mesmerised by Lally that she felt like she'd been pulled out of Cade's old bedroom and sucked into the photo with the small disturbing robot. It was difficult to tell from the photo because Selena didn't know how tall Cade had been at the time, but Lally looked to be somewhere between three and four feet tall. Mostly white and smooth, with a plastic or rubber outer shell, the bald robot had articulated arms and legs, and at, each, and at each bend of its limbs the joints were black. The same blackness joined its neck and torso. The robot's outer shell had been given some vaguely human-like definition. It had small ears and a small nose, the faintest raised trace of eyebrows over the lidless black eyes, and some subtle muscular definition in the torso and limbs. Its mouth was a barely upturned curve, thick-lipped. Selena flinched when Janice turned to the next page in the album. Selena had forgotten Janice was even there. Janice didn't notice Selena's slight movement. She pointed at the next picture, in which Lally and Cade stood together. The robot was positioned, so it appeared to be looking up at Cade with an expression Selena thought was vaguely hostile. No, not hostile, possessive. The picture was the last one in the album. Janice rubbed her fingers over it inside. One day, someone stole Lally, she said, and that was the end of that. Janice looked at her watch. Oh dear, is that the time? I was going to bake a batch of wheat rolls. Would you like to learn how to make them? Cade loves them. Selena was still staring at the photo of Cade and Lally. She looked up at Janice. Was Cade sad? She asked. Janice turned. What do you mean, dear? When Lally was taken, was Cade sad? Janice took the album from Selena and closed it. No, dear. He was just scared. Janice crossed to the closet and replaced the album on the stack. Then she brushed her hands together briskly. I'm going to change. I'll meet you in the kitchen, dear. Selena wanted to ask Janice what she meant. Why was Cade scared? But Janice was clearly done with the conversation. She bustled out of the room. Selena reached for a sweater. She was suddenly cold. By the time Cade showed up a couple of hours later, at the end of his workday, Selena's chills had passed. She was sweating when Cade strode into the kitchen and said, Those rolls smell great. Learning to perfectly knead the dough had distracted Selena from her earlier fright. Seeing Cade, though, brought it back. Selena kept her thoughts to herself during a dinner of bean soup, fresh greens and homemade rolls. By the end of the meal, however, she was ready to confront Cade about it. She was so distracted by the memory of the pictures in Cade's old album that she couldn't look at his face without seeing the robot's face too. As if sensing that Selena wanted to talk to Cade privately, Janice shooed Cade and Selena out onto the deck. I'll take care of the dishes. You two lovebirds need your private time. Selena didn't argue with Janice. Instead, she took Cade's hand and let, led him out of the back door. Cade laughed when she tugged him over to the big green cushioned glider at the edge of the large cedar uh, planked expanse that hugged most of the back of Janice's home. Are we going to make out? <laughs> oh. Okay, FNAF, FNAF has, uh, has definitely changed, uh, Cade asked, squeezing Selena close as they sat. Selena didn't resist his snuggle, but after a few seconds she pulled away. She turned so she could sit sideways on the glider and look at Cade directly. 
Uh oh. Cade said, You're wearing your let's talk about our feelings expression. In spite in spite in spite of the tension that she'd felt since she looked at Cade's album, Selena smiled. You know me so well, she said. And I plan to spend the rest of our lives getting to know you better, he said. See? Such a romantic. Selena was a very lucky woman. An image of little Cade and Lally flashed through Selena's mind. She took a deep breath and let it all out. Why didn't you ever tell me about Freddy's pizza plex? Selena asked. Cade was gazing at her affectionately when Selena started to speak, but by the end of the question, he looked away from her. The easy smile on his face disappeared for an instant. When the smile returned, it wasn't as easy. Whatever I thought you were going to say, Kate chuckled, wasn't that. His chuckle was a bit strained. Well, why didn't you ever mention Freddy's? I looked at one of your photo albums this afternoon. It was full of shots taken there. Your mom said you loved the place, especially this freaky attraction called Lally's Game. A muscle twitched at the corner of Cade's eye. He compressed his lips. You never said anything at all about Lally, Selena pushed, and clearly you liked the thing because it was in a bunch of the photos. Cage shrugged. He narrowed his eyes. Have you told me everything you liked when you were a kid? Selena blinked at the defensive throw-it-back question. She crossed her arms. I might have forgotten a few little things, but yeah, I mostly have told you about my favourite things, and you've talked about your childhood a lot, but you never mentioned Freddy's or Lally's. Your mum said Freddy's was your... Sorry, Lally's was your favourite game, and they had... Ugh. Sorry, my, my mouth went weird. And they had a hard time getting you out of that place. It's a pretty big deal for a kid. It's strange you haven't mentioned it. Cade looked over Selena's shoulder. The sun had just tucked itself behind the rolling hills west of the ranch house. The sky was pink. A chilly breeze began to stir the leaves of the rhode... Oh gosh, what is this word? Rhododendrons. I think that's a flower. The flank of the deck. A few of the bushes, pur bright purple blossoms, blew free of their branches and danced through the air. Cade? Selena prompted. What's going on? You're acting bizarre. Cade stood. I just have some bad memories from that time, okay? Someone got hurt. I, I don't like to talk about it. Without waiting for Selena's response, Cade turned and headed back inside the house. As he went through the door, he called to Janice, warmly, without a trace of the coldness that had hardened the words he'd just thrown at Selena. Want some help with those, Mum? Ha 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 ha!